Ladies and gentlemen, I've got a serious question for you. Who is your favorite streamer? Who's your favorite content creator? Why is it do you think that they're your favorite? What do you like about them? Is there anything you don't like about them? How long have you kept up with their content? How long have you been following them? Have they gotten you through some dark times? Did they bring you laughs? Did they make you feel welcome and like you belonged as a part of their community? Now, after you've thought about all of those things and given an answer, what if I told you that everything you knew was wrong? Now, before we get too far ahead of ourselves, I'd like to go back in time, a time when gaming in general was simpler and content creation did not have a worldwide grip like it does now. The advent and rise of YouTube was so under the radar that I don't even remember when I first picked it up and what that initial journey of YouTube looked like. I'm certain that it was rather far along in its conception for me. However, when I was younger, when a lot of us were younger and we were playing games, it was a much simpler time. Quite like a lot of things that are going on in the world now, quite frankly. You would go to the store, you would buy a game, pick it up off the shelf. Maybe it was a game you had looked up, heard about, the internet still probably wasn't very popular, so there weren't a myriad of articles that you were reading about the game. Hell, sometimes you would even just pick up a game off the shelf because the case and the artwork looked cool. I did that many times. One of the best games I've ever played in my life, I played, I bought, simply for that reason. It just looked cool on the case. On the ride home, there would be a booklet, quite literally a small book inside the case that would introduce you to the game. By the time that you got home, you already had a solid idea of what the world was going to be like, the mechanics, the player, what you were fixing to get into. And it was a completed and finished product. Now, what does this have to do with streaming and content creation? Well, quite simply, when streamers and content creators started to rise, there really wasn't the myriad of topics and subject matter and ways of spinning a story that there are today going on. It was simply that experience that we all had by going to pick up a game for ourselves, take it home, and play it. Only this time, we were playing it with someone watching. There was a content creator playing a game and going through that experience with someone watching watching. And that was really it. There wasn't much more to it than that. Quite frankly, it really wasn't even taken seriously. And I'm sure no one ever thought in the early days of content creation that it would become what it has become today. Big wins in the early days of streaming, quite honestly, probably looked like a few hundred views on a video or maybe a handful of subscribers on a channel, whatever that meant to anyone back then. A group of friends and family had decided that this little idea of yours, this little side project, was worth throwing you a little bit of a break on. People were playing games that were fully completed, that you went to the store and bought for 30, 40, 50, 60 dollars, took home and played from beginning to end. The online multiplayer space uh, really didn't exist, or if it did, it required the purchase of extra peripherals for your system and online access cards to pay for time on the internet. It just didn't work the same way in the beginning. This was back in a time when online platforms like game battles were just starting to rise and the formation of clans that we know and love today were beginning to make their mark on the online competitive space where anyone could hop in and if you had a team and you felt like you were good enough you could throw together a logo, create a profile, name your team and start competing in online tournaments. Again, the concept and the premise of all of this was so much more straightforward. It was so much more about the game, about the experience of the game, about the experience of competing against other people for the sake of the respect and the glory within that community. 
Big wins and victories in this space at that time were not heard of or talked about nearly as much as they are today. Quite frankly, the standard of what it meant to even be successful in any type of field like this back then was nowhere near what it is today. Which brings me to today and the challenge that streaming and being a content creator presents today. And that is the commodity of the industry, the commoditization of what the industry has become and the people within it. So what are streamers and content creators in 2024, going on 2025? What does it mean to be a streamer and a content creator? What does that look like? What does the industry expect? Where is your place within that industry? Well, I touched on this a little bit in the last few videos that I made about the Dr. Disrespect controversy, which is that in the age that we live in now, where everyone is online, everyone is watching, everyone is looking all the time, all the time, looking, consuming, feeding. The nature of streamers and content creators is quite frankly, no different than an actor. You're a brand ambassador and you're either a brand ambassador of yourself, like everyone is in the beginning, or you're a brand ambassador of somebody who has agreed to pay you to represent their brand and their message and what their brand and message ultimately stands for. Now that's not a bad thing, that is a huge milestone and success in this industry and in this business. And most gamers, most content creators, most streamers have a level enough head to know that whoever they choose to work with is a good fit for them in their community or not. So there's nothing wrong with this. The problem arises when people forget why they started, why they began doing it, who they were before, and lose sight of who they were supposed to become along the way. When you reach a certain status in the industry now, and what is often reflected across the industry now, through these major teams, these major companies, these major sponsors, major backings, tournaments, all of the money, the fame, the notoriety, the streamer houses, the cars, all of it. It's really no different than Hollywood is, what we've seen from music and film. It's just its own little iteration, its own little world of that. And like many of the people who are involved in those industries, it often corrupts. It breeds something that takes away from the heart and the core of what all of this was supposed to be for. And that's playing games. Playing games that you enjoy, playing games that are fun, playing games that are fully finished which is another plague of the state of the industry that we are in now. There have been a record number of layoffs within the last year or two in the gaming space, and yet we are still consistently receiving early access beta titles that we are being charged money to test for free that ultimately never come to fruition, given promise after promise, empty vision after empty vision, only to be left dissatisfied once again, often at the helm of many streamers recommendation not that that's against what should be done because content creators and streamers have the most eyes on them in this space so it only makes sense that they'll receive these types of games early and be able to give their opinion and recommendation on them that is not the streamer or the content creators fault more or less a byproduct of what the industry has become in a more negative sense long gone are the days of going to a store and leaving with a case and a booklet describing what the game that you just spot was about to be like. Now you can let a file download in the background while you're at work and it will appear as a nicely colored tile ready for you to click on and open at any time. And there's nothing wrong with that. That is just the advent of the technology we have. Why produce plastic when you could simply download it from a server? It does take away from the overall experience in a sense, at least coming from where I came from. But again, nothing wrong with it. That's just a natural progression of the technology that we have. Perhaps the biggest blunder of all, though, is the controversy and drama that seems to continually exist between these actors in this space. And if not between them, then in and of themselves. With any type of public notoriety and attention, it is bound to happen at some point, and it always will. That's just the nature of being in the public and communicating with other people 
who are also in the public eye. The way that streamers and content creators garner audiences these days is, statistically speaking, more than most modern media. The gaming space brings in more people than film and music combined. It is a multi-billion dollar industry with several high-tier tournaments that take place across myriads of games all year long. So it's no surprise that it's going to house its own form of controversy. However, in the day and age of the internet, where again, everyone is consuming and looking and listening and speaking at all times, it seems like it just happens more and more and more. And the controversy and the drama itself becomes less and less and less sensible. I truly feel like the commodity of this industry has taken away a lot of what it began as and what it was always supposed to be again maybe not what it will be but what it could have been and what we should try to keep it and that is just people who have the privilege and honor of playing games yes we're playing games in a way that is conducive to business to having people watch us to being able to represent brands that we like that we agree with that we use in order to keep ourselves afloat and earn a livelihood. I don't have anything wrong with that. That's every content creator's dream and goal. But at the end of the day, we're playing games for a living. And if you're not playing games and you're producing some of the content that content creators often produce simply for the sake of garnering a reaction based off of the failure or harm or ruining of someone else's name and life, I just can't understand what you're even doing and why you're doing it. It's already bad enough in my mind that we have fallen into a place where we are receiving early access and beta games at a record pace. We are paying essentially to be testers for these companies to release unfinished products. We don't get paid to test them and rarely ever do they come to fruition. Year after year we are given the same rinse and repeated major titles from the same major companies. Granted I am speaking predominantly from the first person shooter space and everything else just seems to be a hack job that we're given promise after promise after promise that doesn't ever seem to really go anywhere. Now streamers are just an unintended byproduct of the state of the industry. Content creators and streamers have so many eyes on them that it only makes sense that they would be given access to games first and then decide whether or not it makes sense to them to recommend it to their community. It's just a shame that so many of the developers behind these games reap the profits and tuck and run before anything about the game and what it was envisioned to be ever fully comes to light. Some of the things that content creators and streamers are involved in these days, quite frankly, holds no entertainment value in my mind at all. To touch again on the reactionary type of content or the downright wrong and illegal, morally and ethically insignificant content, it just doesn't make sense to me. I'm not going to name names, but I will include clips of some of the more notorious stories from recent past. It's a shame when somebody as well who you've watched for quite some time, who you've relied on for entertainment on a consistent basis, quite frankly one of the best to ever do something, falls in such a dramatic way with so many questions left unanswered. All in all to me, it doesn't make sense to enter into this space and not continually have in your mind at the forefront not only why you're doing it, ultimately what the vision for you in this space is, but to never forget that as you grow through it, as you are successful in it, which you assuredly will be as long as you don't quit, that it is your job and your duty to maintain the privilege that we have, to not take for granted the privilege that we have. If you have eyes on you, if you have people following you, especially if they're young and impressionable, then it is your duty to present a space that is exactly what it is supposed to be. We are creating content for entertainment value. We are trying to have fun. We are trying to spread positivity, mental positivity, spiritual, physical. We have an honor and a privilege to be able to do this. So simply trying to go out and flash what you have or act like a complete ignorant fool just to gain some attention and reactions online is a disgrace 
So the opportunity that's been given to each and every one of us who are fortunate enough to be able to sit down and do this. We've strayed far away from it, and I can only hope that through the growth of my content creation, my streaming, my journey on this and other platforms, that I can be a person who's able to maintain that particular type of integrity in this space. Undoubtedly, challenges will come my way, but the level and degree of where this has gone is so far from where it should be. So to wrap this video up, ladies and gentlemen, what is my view? What do I think that this is really supposed to be? Well, I've already laid a lot of that out. Streaming is supposed to be about having fun. It doesn't matter what you're streaming or what your flavor of content creation is. It's supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be educational, informative. Whatever it is, it's supposed to be fun. It doesn't matter what you start with, what your setup is. My setup is pretty minimal. It does the job and it does the job well. I'm not concerned about having the fanciest, nicest things right now because this is about having fun, about growing, about learning, about making use of what you do have. It's about keeping your eyes set on the ultimate prize. First and foremost is why you're doing it, why you started in the first place why you felt like this was something that represented you and that you wanted to be a part of. Things that might come from all of this along the way, a little bit of money, a little bit of recognition, some fame, some sponsorships, whatever that is, has absolutely nothing to do with why we are here. It has nothing to do with the privilege that we have been given to be able to sit in our homes, to create content online for people to watch and engage with. It's simply of a byproduct of sticking to core values, much like you should do in any other aspect of your life. Aim to become a better person, a better version of yourself from 1.0 to 2.0 and so on. The money, the cars, the relationships, the controversy, the houses, all of that is just noise surrounding those core values. The only way to make sure that your house isn't blown down by all of that noise circling is to ensure that that foundation, the pillars upon which it is built are firm. So don't lose your eyes on that. If you want to get into this industry, these are things you have to recognize. But start now. Be realistic about it and try to improve every single time you do something. Try to be authentic and to be genuine with what this is supposed to be about, having fun. I thank you guys very much for tuning in, for listening to me rant and rave and ramble. I'd love to have you as a part of my community. A like the video, subscribing is even better. We are live three days a week here on YouTube as well as on Twitch. There are links on the channel page in the description, easy to find. Would love to have you guys come in and gals talk Talk about what's going on in your life, gaming, how you are mentally, spiritually, physically. We have a good time because that's what it's all about. That's what we want it to be about. We want it to be about having a good time. Now, if you're interested in some of my takes on a lot of the controversy that's been surrounding probably the biggest issue in the industry right now, then click on the video here linked on the screen and I'll catch you guys over there.